Most people know of the major scams in the poker world like the full tool poker scam and the absolute poker scam and hence we are not going to talk about that here. However, there are several interesting poker scams that did not hit the mainstream media that well and hence are not well known to the people. What is up guys, Maxi from Poker Bounty and these are the 7 poker scams that you probably did not know. Number 1. Sideline Reporters In 2010, the Partouche Poker Tour uncovered a complex cheating scandal that had apparently been perpetrated all over Europe. The leader of this cheating ring was Ali Tekin Temgak. Tekin Temgak's cheating history stretched back several years and he was found guilty of heading up a ring that targeted wealthy players, many of whom were of Eastern European descent at an Osberg area casino. Key to the case was the discovery of several electronic devices designed to assist in cheating found in the car of Ali's associate and poker player Kadir Karbulut. Back in 2010, the name of the Turkey-born German player came to the media's attention after he first won the World Poker Tour Spanish Championship in Barcelona for 278,000 euros. At that time, Ali said he had only played in a handful of major live tournaments but was now looking forward to showcasing his skills at the World Series of Poker main event. Unfortunately, those skills he was talking about involved reading the signals sent to him by fake live bloggers at the events who would then relay information to him on the other players' whole cards. However, Ali's cheating ways eventually caught up to him at the 8500 euro Partouche Poker Tour where he made it all the way to the final table with a 1.3 million euro top prize awaiting the ultimate winner. Ali even progressed to 4th in chips before the video footage was produced showing his cheating and leading to his disqualification from the event. As can be seen from the video, the decisive hand of the 2010 WPT Spanish Championship, an alleged poker journalist, was strategically placed behind Ali's opponent to spy on his whole cards through his camera. Once he had seen the cards, the reporter would then communicate them to Ali with a particular code. Incredibly, while waiting his court case, Ali had the gall to use the free ticket he had earned from his WPT Spanish Championship victory to enter the $25,000 buy-in WPT Championship. Not surprisingly, his presence in the tournament caused an uproar amongst the other players with Daniel Legrano confronting Ali at one stage. Soon after these incidents, Ali slipped back into the shadows but following a recent court case, he was thrown back into the spotlight by a judge in Augsburg. The behavior finally caught up with him as he was arrested later by German authorities. In an amazing display of chutzpah, Ali later filed suit against the Partouche Tour and its organizers. Ali sought 1.5 million euros in damages for loss of income and damage to his reputation, the accumulated video evidence notwithstanding. The lawsuit doesn't appear to have gone anywhere, it was either dismissed or quietly dropped in the face of the evidence. Ali pleaded guilty and was sentenced to 3 years, 5 months in prison after being convicted of running a poker cheating ring by the Augsburg District Court. One of Ali's partners acknowledged his role in the scheme and received a suspended sentence while another accomplice disappeared and hasn't been heard from since. Number 2. The MSN Messenger Poker Scam The Emerson Messenger scam is a big scam that had been pulled off many years ago involving two popular poker names, Patrick Antonius and Johnny Laden. When the two were battling each other, a new poker player appeared and was not afraid to play anybody including both Antonius and Laudan. After playing the two pros for a while, he asked them to communicate with him through MSN Messenger. But as it eventually turned out, the man was a hacker and infected their computers with a bug that allowed him to see their whole cards. Laudan and Antonius lost over 3 million before finding out what was really going on. The hacker was never prosecuted and has since disappeared. Number 3. The Blonde Poker Staking Scam Over the years, there have been a few incidents of people building up a solid reputation through poker forums and then subsequently making off with thousands of dollars from the people that have grown to trust them. The scam perpetrated by Neil Blotchley on the Blonde Poker Forum is the largest till date. Blotchley created a staking thread where he was looking for backers so he could test his sports betting model. With a few interested parties taking him up on the offer, the success stories started rolling in and Blotchley quickly gained more and more capital from investors. Unfortunately, the too good to be true story was just that, too good to be true. 
Blotchley was running something of a Bernie Madoff Ponzi scheme. Blotchley was placing bets but then was also taking money of the top which he used to gamble, vacation and improve his lifestyle. He went on to post about how well his sports betting system was going every week reporting thousands of pounds in returns. This went on for quite some time until people started asking questions about his system. They wanted proof that what he was posting was actually true. Initially, anyone who questioned his posts was mocked, but to everyone's surprise, Blotchley soon admitted that everything was gone, partially spent on a vacation in Miami, and partly lost in casino stakes. Number 4. The Contact Lens Scandal In 2011, Les Prince's casino was duped for over $64,000 in a well-architected scheme by four men. The scammers, three Italians and a Frenchman, used high-tech contact lenses and invisible ink marking to pull off the scam. In one specific session, the French used the invisible ink to make a line on the ace and king cards. The Italians, on the other hand, used the contact lenses to see the different symbols on the cards. Unfortunately, their big wins were suspicious and the police were called upon. The suspects were later found sleeping at a nearby hotel in position of 30 decks of marked cards and a set of contact lenses. The elaborate and daring strategy impressed even the presiding judge who called it the first of its kind in Europe and a combination of old techniques and high-end technology. For all their cunning, however, the court didn't hesitate to slap them with a two-year prison sentence and a hundred thousand euro fine. Number 5. The Epic Poker League what could have been an amazing brand for the ages, the Epic Poker League became an epic failure. 100 creditors being owed over $5 million between them after Epic's parent company declared bankruptcy after only three events, aborting a promised million dollar free roll in the process. Epic Poker should have done it on a small budget, but however, tried to do it on a very big budget was how one unpaid investor described the debacle, which once again had the disgraced and disgraceful Annie Duke setting center stage when it all fell apart. Number 6. The Hotel Buck Controversy in Barcelona This horrifying incident took place at the EPT event in 2013 in Barcelona at the Art Hotel. It is where most high-stakes players were residing at the time. The story was brought to light by a Finnish high-stakes player known as Jens Kjolin after a strange thing happened in his hotel room. He claimed his laptop was stolen by unknown people and then returned some hours later. It was as if a bug was installed on the device during the time that it was stolen. Other high-stakes pros residing at the same hotel also reported the same incident. The hotel security team could not produce any security footage of the different incidents nor give out a good explanation for the incidents. They were simply trying to whitewash everything when asked about the situation. Ultimately, their queries plus a PokerStars investigation was unfruitful as nothing tangible came out of it. Nonetheless, it was evident that most high-stakes poker players are at the risk of losing huge amounts of money in this scam. Number 7. The Poker Spot Scandal the Poker Spot scandal was one of the first real scandals to hit the online poker world as early as in 2001. After successfully launching the internet's first online poker room with several game types, the site went belly up and never paid out its debts to players. Poker Spot saw the light of the day as early as May of 2000 when the site launched with the internet's first offer to play several online poker game types. Before the launch of Poker Spot, only Planet Poker was offering online poker, but Poker Spot aspired to challenge this with fresh competition and a widened offer, including stud and Omaha games as well as poker tournaments. The takeoff of Poker Spot went well under the supervision of founding brothers Dutch and Robert Boyd. The two brothers had conceived the idea of a large online poker operation at a time when the market was still emerging and could potentially look forward at a huge operation. Sadly, it would go down very wrong instead, leaving the company as an example of how loosely regulated the online poker market was in its early days. About one year after its launch, PokerSpot ran into its first problems. PokerSpot was relying on two payment processors who were in charge of handling payouts and deposits between the players and the site. In the year 2000, the two processing companies failed, leaving PokerSpot with a hole of half a million dollars which was never recovered. 
Once the liquidity problem struck Poker Spot, Dutch Boyd attempted to save his operation by instructing his support teams to lie to the players. As requests for missing payouts began rolling in, Dutch Boyd's company repeatedly claimed that checks were already in the mail, although the company could in fact not cover the missing money. In November of 2001, the losses were so substantial that Poker Spot closed up shop, still owing players more than $400,000. The money has never been recovered and today, the incident represents the first example of an online poker site going under with players paying the bill. Ironically, Boyd himself had over 1.7 million in live tournament earnings at that time, but still, no funds had been returned to the former Poker Spot players. This video is powered by Bluff the Spot, the best place to learn how to win at poker from actual high-stake coaches like MMA Sherdog. Check the link in the description.